Hello, so the title of this video is mostly telling the truth, but there are a couple of caveats that I want to go through immediately. The first and really pressing one is that this only works in theory. I think you'll be thoroughly disappointed by how poorly this works if you actually try it. But we're coming at this just from an interest perspective, right? We're seeing what is in theory possible. And more precisely, my claim is that there's a tablet filter that's built into Open Tablet Driver that can in theory play any map with you only changing the parameters. You don't have to install anything extra. The second point I have to mention is that this is only for relax because if you don't have relax, you need to click and the tablet filters cannot do that. So we're only talking about the position of the cursor here. And the final one is even if you did somehow get this to work, this is obviously disallowed. So at this point you might be thinking, what tablet filter is there that's so powerful we can define an entire beatmap using just its parameters? And the answer is the custom filter. At first glance this gives us less power than you'd think we'd need to do this. So what does this filter do? So we can define the x and y positions of our cursor using all of these variables. So here's a really simple example, we have our x position and y position. The x we're just setting to be the actual input x and we're doing the same thing for y. So normally this would be the y input and we could go to any position on the screen. But now we're stuck on this diagonal line because our y coordinate is equal to x. So that's all well and good, we can have all of these fancy equations for our cursor position, but how are we going to use these variables to define a beatmap? It seems impossible at first. So we have the position of our cursor, we have the tilt, we have the last computed values of these. How on earth is that helpful for us playing OSU? So the answer comes in the form of this last computed pressure variable. This turns out to be very useful. When the filter is loaded or when we first give our input, this is initialized to zero. We can set this to be the previous computed one, plus one every tick of the filter. And this is a huge deal. We now have this global counter that keeps incrementing the longer we run the filter. So a very simple example is when we set our output x coordinate to be the input x plus this counter. So even though our input's not moving, we see this cursor shoot across the screen like that. I won't go too much into the maths, but it's possible to define the position of our entire beatmap with just this time variable. So what we'll do, we'll fit a polynomial for the positions of the objects, and we'll do this once for each axis. So one for the x positions of the objects, and one for the y positions, and then we'll put one in here, put one in here, and they'll both work out. So to be crystal clear, let's think of this example, and let's just say that it's the x positions. The horizontal value here represents that global time and the height of each of these yellow points represents the x position. So here we have maybe one really far to the right, here really far to the left. And this gives us a set of points. We have a corresponding time and position for all of the object, and then we can fit a polynomial to that. The computer will do that for us. So all that's left for us to do is to set these coordinates to that formula. And here's some examples of how this might look in practice. So all of these numbers represent objects in a beatmap. This could be entered manually or read from a beatmap file. So we're taking the x positions, putting that through the polynomial solver, doing the same for y, and then replaying those movements as time increases. So we start from the one and have this curve round going through all of the points. Here's one with five points. I'm sorry, it's a bit smaller, but we're going one, two, three, four, five. So at the right instant, it's in the circle. It's on those objects. That's all that matters. And here's an example with 10 points, so we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and this will shoot way off. This is where one of the issues with this method becomes very obvious, and it's that if we have a number of points that are chosen arbitrarily, we will very probably need that many variables, that many different exponents for our time variable, to define a line that goes through all of them. And this is where the limits of modern hardware come into play. This point is not gone through just because of floating point precision and so on. This becomes even more prevalent as we have way more than 20 points, like a thousand would be completely undoable. Just because we have these really, really delicate functions that if we just touch a tiny bit, they'll shoot off. And the errors caused by the precision of our hardware is more than this small tweak needed. It dissolves almost, it disintegrates. So unfortunately you're not going to be setting any scores using this method anytime soon. I'll finish off with a couple points that I think are highly relevant but I haven't quite figured out how to implement yet. The first is that instead of defining our positions with polynomials, we'll use radial basis functions. I won't go into it, but these are way, way, way more mathematically stable. You see, even with 50 points, we're virtually going through all of them. Uh, it'd be really nice if we can use them. But with the current interface for open tablet driver filters, we cannot define these. The second point that I think is possible is we can define when key presses happen. 
then we would not be limited to relax only we could just have this player map for us using only open tablet driver filters all we need is one more last computed value variable we need that to play with and then we can do this so what we'll do is define instance in time where we want a key press to happen and where we don't want a key press to happen and then find a curve that fits this then we'll set the pressure to be this value using time as some other variable that we don't have yet then there's other plugins that can read this pressure value and have a threshold where if it's above it will clicking and it won't click otherwise. I think that's all I have to say. Thank you. Bye bye.